This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. The state election battle is heating up, with the Australian Education Union today launching its campaign to bring more resources into the state schools. It's calling on 450 new teachers for the system amid claims that students are severely suffering from a lack of school resourcing. It's not hard to tell there's an election just around the corner. The Australian Education Union today launching its pre-election campaign, claiming Tasmanian students are under threat from what it says is a lack of government funding in the sector. It's calling on 250 more teachers and 200 teaching assistants. Schools are running on goodwill and Teachers, principals and support staff are being asked to do more with less every day. Under the previous government 100 teachers were cut. Uh, we've put 100 uh, teachers back in and 60 additional support staff. If we're serious about providing the best education opportunities for our young people, we need to have teachers in the classrooms. Leanne Clifford has been in the sector for 25 years and she says she has rising concerns over her students' wellbeing. She says staff at her school are increasingly dealing with issues of domestic violence, abuse and children who need one-on-one -on -one care. But she says there's not enough resources to go around. We can't make a difference to their lives and we can't show them the difference they can make if our funding is cut and we don't have enough people on the ground that can support them. The spend under this government uh, far exceeds what has ever been spent in terms of uh, teachers and of course support staff as well. But policy analyst Martin Goddard isn't convinced. Recently publishing a report claiming that over 2015-2016 the government didn't spend over half a million dollars that was available for Tasmanian state schools. What that means is that our students are being funded by the state government for $900 less per student than the federal government and the Grants Commission thinks they need to have a national standard education. It's concerning to hear that he thinks that education money is not being spent appropriately in our schools and I do think that warrants further investigation. Every single student deserves the resources they need to be supported in the classroom and we know right now that's not happening. The government maintains it's putting record amounts into the sector. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. A person has died in a single motorcycle crash on the Pyman Road at Tulla earlier this afternoon. The road is now open after being closed for several hours. The cause of the crash is being investigated. Investigators have deemed the cause of the Argonaut Road bushfire at St Helens to be accidental, having started from a burn-off on private property some weeks ago. The blaze reignited last week and has burned through more than 7,500 hectares of land. The large air tanker Thor, on loan from New South Wales, has been utilised this afternoon to help consolidate containment lines. Crews remain on high alert with the fire danger rating expected to escalate over the weekend. Two community information meetings were held today with another taking place tomorrow morning at St Mary's Hall from 9am. The Tasmanian surf community is in mourning following the tragic death of one of its members last weekend. Timmy Lawrence has today been remembered as a fun-loving and happy larrikin, with hundreds turning out to pay their respects by paddling out on surfboards to the place he loved most. <laughs> Late this afternoon, hundreds poured out onto Clifton Beach with their boards. Those who were closest to Timmy Lawrence coming together to form a guard of honour. <laughs> Paddling out to form a circle to pay tribute and scatter the ashes of their partner, son and mate. Just last week, the 32-year-old carpenter died in a tragic jet ski accident on Tasmania's east coast. Many today reflecting on the good times, describing the Dodgers Ferry local as full of life and a fun-loving larrikin. He was just everyone's friend, always on the go, just charging and, and took everyone with him. He was always, you know, he always had people with him, always had good people. We did a whole bunch of stuff together, you know, partying and just running a mark when we were young and nothing ever changed, it was just all good times, so. 
This afternoon's memorial service saw the local clubhouse spill out with those who knew and loved him and wanted to share memories of the popular surfer. His girlfriend Caitlin Williams spoke of their close relationship, describing his passion for life and of the ocean. A family friend offering a fitting tribute, signing off his speech with a nod to Timmy's love of the water. And beautiful. He would have loved it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Grant, one of Timmy's lifelong friends, is expecting a child next week and he'll be named after his old friend. He's going to be a handful like Timmy, but you know, he's going to grow up knowing Tim and, and he'll, be part of, he'll be part of my son's life. A GoFundMe page set up to support his loved ones has already received dozens of donations. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, we've raised 20000 today plus, so Amazing. it's going to... She's overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Are we all just going to ride this wave, big wave together? So he's going to always be with us, and, and you know he'll just be part of all our lives for until we'll, we pass, and we'll just be thinking of him every day from here on forward. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. After booming in popularity from the second it opened, the Three Capes track has been confirmed as the star of Tasmania's nature-based tourism experiences, with 19,000 walkers expected on the track by mid-November. It also benefits our economy and the local tourism of the Tasman Peninsula. Uh, so local businesses down there are benefiting in terms of accommodation, uh, in terms of the visitor spend down there. Bookings are sold out from November right through to late January, with more than 6,000 forward bookings received through to the end of August 2018. Work is also on schedule to complete the final stage of the track to the Third Cape by early next year. A new heart service has officially opened its doors today in the hope of reducing the current strain on the public health system. The state has the highest rate of heart disease in the nation, a result prompting the Healthy Living Clinic to develop a six-week rehabilitation and education program. It says will help patients make the changes needed to prevent further cardiac events. So when someone's had a cardiac event, they are psychologically very vulnerable to change. And these are people who've had patterns of behaviour and, and living for many, many years, which is actually what's largely caused them to become unwell in the first place. The Launceston-based Charles Clinic also provides outreach heart care services from Strawn to St Helens. Everything from industrial hemp to medicinal cannabis will be on show in Australia's first ever expo celebrating Earth. With hemp foods becoming legally available for consumption in Australia from November 12, the expo will aim to remove the stigma surrounding the plant. While this might look like marijuana, it's not. In fact, it could legally be used for food and medicine. There's 2,000 different species of cannabis. 10% of that is marijuana. 90% of it has no drug value whatsoever. Hemp is a natural plant and one of the oldest domesticated crops. But farmers in Tasmania grow a lot of hemp and they have been for the last 20 years. The hemp seed that's produced by the Tasmanians in a cool climate is actually superior to hemp seed grown in other parts of the country. In a Tasmania first, the Earth Expo will showcase everything hemp and aim to burst the stigma surrounding the plant. I think we're breaking down those barriers and people are starting to realise how valuable cannabis is. The nutritional profile of, of hemp seed, that's what makes it different from everything else. It is the perfect balance of omega-3, 6 and 9, perfect and optimal for human consumption as well as a whole complement of vitamins and minerals and central fatty acids. More and more people are waking up to the benefits of the cannabis plant which could be used for food, medicine, clothes, beauty and building products. There's still a large stigma surrounding the herb with people often thinking of it as just a drug. The problem is, is that cannabis has been demonised for the last 80 years and therefore it's very hard for people to really switch their head around to understanding the word cannabis can mean something wonderful rather than something evil. The first ever expo will be held at the Albert Hall this weekend. Rita Risk, Southern Cross News.
now a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has fallen on fears the Turnbull government could lose its one-seat majority following the High Court's ruling disqualifying Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce from Parliament because of his dual citizenship. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 13.1 points. Short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.4 US cents and 65.68 Euro cents. The Launceston Football Club is leading the way in promoting gender diversity within its coaching ranks. It's the first Tasmanian State League team to appoint a female assistant coach, a decision it hopes will prompt other clubs to follow suit. It's official, Deb Reynolds will help coach the Launceston football team for the 2018 season and it's a move the 34-year-old is proud to be making. To be the first is wonderful, but I, I really hope that other females in the football space can actually sit back and think, well, if, if Deb can do it, then, then I can do it as well. The former champion squash player, basketballer and mother of two admits she's nervous, but excited to be bringing a different perspective to the game. Because whether you're female or, or male, we both have things to offer. Um, and you see them differently through different eyes at different times. Um, so I think that's a, you know, a wonderful thing for others to think. Reynolds was crowned AFL Tasmania's 2016 Coach of the Year after leading the Launceston Youth Girls side to a premiership. Switching to the men's competition, fuelled by her ambition to one day coach her own team. Sam's given me a wonderful opportunity to learn from him, to learn from a professional environment and I'm excited to to take that further. Coach Sam Lonigan also hopes the new mix will help bring further success for the club after finishing third on the ladder this season. Firstly, uh, we obviously want to go after the Premiership. That's what all sides are there to do. So uh, in terms of Deb as a coach, the best coaching groups uh, have a diverse range of people within their, their leadership structures. And the former Essendon player is keen to see the rest of the state back its decision to welcome Reynolds. I think the, the female space is fantastic at the moment. I've got a three-year-old daughter myself, so you know the more clubs that, that uh, buy into supporting this area is, is fantastic for, for football and, and just community development and growth. Jesse Gilmore, Southern Cross News. After dismissing Western Australia for 323, Tasmania was sitting at 1 for 16 in the side Sheffield Shield clash at the Wacker a short time ago. Late yesterday, the Tigers' attack made a late surge to claw back into the match with Gabe Bell, Sam Rainbird and Jackson Bird firing with the ball. Things almost got off to an ideal start for the Tigers when Jackson Bird thought he had the side's first scalp. Instead, Sean Marsh went on to make the most of his lifeline. Cam Bancroft soon found his feet at the expense of Andrew Feckety, but was dismissed shortly after on 18. It did little to slow the Warriors' momentum as Marsh raced past his half tonne. Hilton Cartwright joining him shortly after with the Tigers in desperate need of a breakthrough. That coming courtesy of Feckety, ending Marsh's day on 63. And when a precision Sam Rainbird ball caught Cartwright right off guard, the Tigers were right back in it. Mitch Marsh tried to steer the ship back on course with a quick fire 33 before becoming Bird's first victim of the match. Marcus Stoinis and Josh Inglis didn't last long at the crease as Bird and Gabe Bell claimed another wicket apiece. Rain Bird bagging the Tigers seventh scalp of the day before stumps with the Warriors seven for 285. It's one of the fastest growing team sports in the world and today mixed sides from around the country converged on Hobart for three days of competition in the annual Australian Mixed Ultimate Frisbee Championships. Seven aside, played on an American football size field, a uh, score by catching it in the end zone, can't run with it. So it's a combination of lots of sports but lots of running, good fun. 16 clubs are competing in the championships, with, which culminates with finals on Sunday afternoon. Good evening. Hobart 24 today, Launceston 22 with Burnie on 17, Devonport 18 degrees. Temperatures in the central, west and south between 5 and 8 degrees above average. Campania, Grove and Bushy Park 23, Strawn 22 and Fingal 21. Flinders Island and Friendly Beaches 20, St Helens 19 today, King Island 18, Low Head and Wynyard 17 degrees. A low pressure trough has generated a band of mid-level clouds that extends from the Northern Territory over Adelaide and over the uh, Bight. Cold front also approaches the Bight with another to the southwest. Low cloud sits over and to our north. The remainder of the state mostly clear there on the close-up. 
Tomorrow the low is to our west with the next cold front due to cross Tasmania tomorrow. Uh, a trough extends from this system north over the mainland, a high moves over Western Australia. The winds north to north easterly reaching 15 to 25 knots around midday, increasing to 30 knots over some waters by evening as they shift more westerly. Strong wind warning for waters between Wineglass Bay and Sandy Cape. A morning shower or two for Hobart tomorrow, top of 23 degrees as the rain clears, 18 for Medina with a morning shower, a shower for Oatlands and 21. Launceston showers clearing later in the day, 22 the maximum, 18 the top for Devonport, morning showers as well for Lyawini and 17. Burnie early showers, 18, showers easing from Strawn, 17 and 16 for Marawar. St Helens tomorrow, a top of 23 with an early shower clearing, 25 for Swansea, Orford 24 degrees. UV. Six sevens tomorrow, so 42, and that's high. On Sunday, light showers over the north, otherwise fine until showers develop over the west later. Showers on Monday contracting to the west and south during the evening, and showers over the west on Tuesday, but mainly fine elsewhere. A shower or two for Perth, a clearing shower for Melbourne, partly cloudy in Adelaide and Sydney, a sunny day forecast for Brisbane, and also Cairns. A little cloud over the state at the moment, partly cloudy in Hobart, still 20 though, Launceston 18 and cloudy and 16 in Devonport. Joe, at the Hobart show, the Royal show on Thursday, you were giving out free hugs to all comers. Uh, I'm hoping you'll be doing that all again tomorrow for your fans. No, you're not getting any free hugs at all. No, not me. <laughs> Thank you, Murph. That's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a little bit later with updates. Bye-bye.